Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. And so today's video, I'm working in Procreate again, and I just completed uh, pretty much pencils of this. I mean, it's still a little rough, but clean enough where I could go in here and ink it up and, you know, color it or whatever uh, if I decide to do that. But one of the things I want to show you with this, I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable with drawing full pieces on this already, and I probably only did about, I don't know, I'm probably on sketch number... 20 25 i don't know I've, I've done a lot of sketches on this but uh as far as finished pieces maybe about four or five um so i'm already feeling comfortable with this almost no learning curve which is great uh this particular program is a lot like photoshop in a lot of ways you know they're all kind of starting to conform to the same mentality of you know layers and uh overlay methods and blending modes and brushes and this actually has some really neat uh, custom brush effects lots and lots of options to modify the brushes but the particular reason for this video is to show you how I'm already uh, enjoying the the perspective tools so you know a shot like this of spider-man I could pretty much draw without thinking about it too much you know I, I did play with the poles a little bit just because foreshortening is always tricky but uh, I'm always struggling with backgrounds and I feel that you know if the software you know me working primarily digitally if the software has really good perspective tools it makes my life a lot easier and this one's got something I wish a lot of them had and that's what I want to touch on so let me show you how this works if you notice I've already got the perspective uh, grids visible right and you see I tilted the horizon line okay that's my rough sketch I started with just kind of blocking the pose then I do like a blue line overlay uh, that I set to screen mode just so you know see that little s to the right you can't see that I'm clicking, but I click on that, and that gives me my blending mode. I go to Lighten, Screen, and that gives me the effect. Whatever I paint over that, you see I just kind of blotched in some blue. It turns the underneath layer to whatever color that is. So you can do red line, blue line, whatever you want. So I've had a few people ask me about that technique. That's how I do that. So at any rate, so I drop in these perspective guides, right? And you get to these by going to this little, uh, uh, is that a wrench? You can tell I'm not a mechanic. That's a wrench right there. Uh, <laughs> And then you basically go to like uh, the canvas perspective guide. You can toggle this on and off like that. Okay, you can edit it by clicking here. And I'm not going to edit them, but it's simple as you know. Always start with a rough sketch. That's at least this is how I do it. I start with a very rough sketch, and I move those around. I guess it doesn't matter now since I've already done the drawing. So you move these around. Let me zoom up closer so you can see the effect. So the nice thing is that you can pull these off camera wherever they need to be. Uh, and your rough sketch will guide you to to finding your correct uh, you know guides that you need these to be in place. I usually do one shortly off uh, camera. Uh, when I say camera, I mean the canvas, whatever. Uh, and then one really far off. That to me is always like how a good comic perspective works. And then you know you got to know things about perspective. Like if your horizon line is up really high, you're looking down on the object or room or whatever it is, character. And if it's really low, you're looking up at something dramatically or, or however. And then if you tilt the horizon, you're just basically tilting the the, the view of the viewer or whatever uh, to do your, your drawing or whatever. So And you can do that after the fact. You know, that's the beauty of digital. You really don't have to tilt the horizon line because you can draw in perspective and then just move that layer uh, tilted or whatever. Okay, so that's how I would manipulate and get those into place. And if you need to add a third one, you just basically click on to the uh, black and uh, grid area of the canvas, and you move that around, and then you get your third vanishing point. So this is really great for creating dynamic effects and drawing comics and, and what have you, any kind of storytelling, really. So, you know, an architectural rendering or whatever. But so, so now once you've got that in place, you can hit Done. You see they're kind of set there. You can add a new layer. And I'll add this layer and I'll say uh, you click on the layer one time and then you click perspective assistance and then now everything you draw will go to those those guides you know with a reasonable amount of uh, accuracy every now and then it'll it'll kind of skip off or something but not too bad this one's pretty darn accurate and you know and hopefully you've got a good enough eye where you can see I usually establish, uh, you know, a building or something like this or whatever. And then from there I can say, okay, if I see something go off, maybe I, I notice it because I keep my eye on that first building kind of thing. And then from here you just start, you know, filling in some details and studying some other buildings and, and trying to figure out 
how to uh, you know refine your details of your building and this isn't about me teaching you how to draw a cityscape or something I've got other videos on my channel for that and even if they're in a different program or software uh, it's the same rules are gonna apply I can give you a quick tip though as far as doing buildings one of the easiest things to do um, you know, always study reference when it comes to buildings I do anyways and then the other thing is just to work large and then work down into your smaller shapes so you basically block in some big shapes you know whether or not you get these big segments across the building and always think about areas that have some depth so you're gonna get a little bit of uh, you're looking up at the building so you're gonna get a little bit of drop shadow or, or you know the bottom area of the block work or whatever this is you just have to imagine all that and then you just work into smaller details and the, the more you keep working into it the larger whoops sorry I'm losing uh, battery life there um, the more uh, you're gonna get with uh, that distracted me sorry the more you're gonna get a, a larger building is what I was trying to get at so the more you can keep working into these little details make the windows smaller the buildings gonna start to appear larger everything in contrast and size relationship so all right, that's all I'm gonna say about perspective now the other thing that I wanted to mention that's so cool about working with this particular program and perspective drawing is this let's go ahead and take and say that I wanted uh, I was drawing in perspective right here on this building and I've got this other I don't know segmented area that comes up and, you know and it gets real boring if you're doing block on top of a block on top of a block and you know that's not you know and this is a bad perspective by the way the way I've got it laid out uh, so it looks skewed um, but the other thing is that you got to remember that buildings always have these different kind of angles and things going on. The beauty of this program is right here. Along with the perspective guides, you've got this ability to throw in a quick angle. A lot of them don't have this that I've noticed. So say I have this structure off to the side, and I draw this structure into perspective, but I don't just want a block off to the side. I want a nice angle that comes from this corner over to, we'll say, right there. Well, how do I do that? Do I got to toggle off perspective and draw a line? No, you basically draw the line, hold for a second, and it becomes a pullable line, or I don't know how you want to classify it. It's a quick line effect, I think it's called. And then you drop it right to that section, and then continue on with your perspective drawing. I can't express to you how, how well that works. A lot of what you're going to see uh, right here, uh, effects like here. Oh, and this is the other beautiful thing. Watch this. You can also toggle that perspective guide off, but it still is in effect. It's still working. So you can keep working, adding layers, and you can have layers on or off perspective assistance, so you can jump back and forth that way. You can just simply click here and take it off. It's really well done. But the beauty of this is as you're working in perspective, I want my sketch brush, technical pencil. Um, if I want this line right here, then I don't have to worry about drawing out a perspective. I can draw that line Oops, went ahead and layer, add layer. Um, and I'll do it off perspective assistance because this, this tool also works the same way. So say I do this squiggly line and I hold for a second, see how it snaps? And I can drag that anywhere I need it. That works really great in conjunction with perspective drawing and that's how I did this background that you see here. You know, and then at the very end after I've got enough of my base stuff, I get in there and I detail and um, you know, do more texture and stippling and shading and all that fun stuff. So that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you today. If you got any questions, be sure to comment in the section below. I'll have more drawings like this, and more how-to videos as I get more familiar with the program. Uh, but I want to take it small or take it uh, slow because I'm not real advanced with this program. If you watch the channel, you know that I'm more fluent in like Photoshop, Manga Studio, things like that. But this is a really great program, and on the iPad Pro, it works phenomenally. And here's a sample of that work. So hopefully you enjoy it. Keep in mind that you can, uh, you know, contribute to the work that I do here and help out by following me on Gumroad and Patreon and things like that. So if you can, cool. And as always, there'll be more content on the way. So thanks very much for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.